Welcome to Das Geek. We have had an exciting week with the Retro Pie already. We're going to do the last step that you really need to perform in order to start utilizing this beautiful setup you have with your Raspberry Pi. Yes, you have a video game console for about 40 bucks, and now you can load all kinds of games, emulators out there to start playing some of the old school titles that you grew up with and loved. So I'm going to show you how to set up those games and move them over to your retro pie. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can utilize a USB drive. This to me is the most difficult method to use, but it's not hard. It's just more difficult than the other method I'm going to show you. But just in case this is the method you want to use, what you're going to do is you're going to plug this into your computer like so and you're going to notice that it's going to pop up here and let me make this big screen so it's going to pop up here and I already have a folder on here called RetroPie but you if you've just done this will want to format this drive first so you're going to right click you're going to go to format and you're going to make sure it's FAT32 and there's nothing else on it then you're going to go open it up and you're going to right click and you're going to create a new folder and that folder is going to be named RetroPie R-E-T-R-O-P-I-E -E, all one word that's it all lowercase so you're going to type that in and, and you're done for now. So you're going to pull your USB drive out and you're going to put it into your Raspberry Pi into a USB slot and you're going to wait. And while you're waiting, you're going to notice the light on your USB drive is blinking. If it has a light, if you don't have a light, wait four minutes. Or if you have a light, wait until that light stops blinking. Once that light stops blinking, you can pull out your USB drive and you'll know if it's done right because when you open up that folder once you put it back in your PC you're gonna have two subfolders now that you didn't create the system created them for you you didn't have to go through any menu items you don't have to do anything you just literally plug it into your retro pie or your uh, Raspberry Pi and it does all the work for you but it's gonna create two folders one's configs and one's ROMs and here you're gonna see a list of consoles that you can move the ROMs to now when it comes to getting ROMs that's going to be up to you. I can't show you because the video could be flagged how to get ROMs, but I can tell you if you just do a simple Google search of the title or the console name that you want, like N64 plus the game's name plus ROM, you're going to find a bunch of options. There are torrents out there that you can download, and there are sites that just host individual files. Now, the rule of thumb is that you should own the game before you download the ROM. I'm going to leave that up to you as a conscious decision of how you want to proceed, but that's the rule of thumb that most people give. Now, I'm lucky because my wife actually kept her Nintendo, Sega, and all that stuff, and all of the games in perfect condition. So when she moved in, I had all of these, but who wants to go through the mess of setting up all these consoles and wiring them and the, trying to get converters and all of that? This is a much easier way to start using the device. So... Now that you've done that, you've got to download a ROM. In my case, I've downloaded a Game Boy Advance, or a Game Boy, not Advance, just a Game Boy ROM called Killer Instinct. So it's in a zip format, and that's okay. You don't have to change it. I'm going to right click on this file I downloaded. I'm going to cut it here, and I'm going to go into my Game Boy folder, and I'm going to paste it. So now I've moved it onto my USB drive in a zip format. You can see I have another game there, Double Dragon, as well and I can go to my my retro pie and I can install it there's an easier way though if you have a lot of ROMs you want to move you can see that retro pie has shown up on my network so I can go to retro pie itself instead of using the USB I can download the ROMs from whatever source I want and then just expand that and you'll see there's a section here called ROMs as well that looks exactly like the file system it created on the USB drive you've got the list of consoles here and one of those consoles is the Game Boy where I have the Double Dragon there. So I can go and, let's see, let's go up to my drive. And instead of having it here, I'm going to go ahead and move it directly. So I don't have to transport the USB drive. I'm going to move it directly into my RetroPie from the network. And so there you go. It's copied it over. And now I have it on my physical uh, uh, Raspberry Pi device. 
So what we're going to do next, we're going to go down to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to restart the emulation, and I'm going to show you a little bit of the game clips. But that's how you do it. That's how easy it is, how you install ROMs. You don't have to mess with the zip file. Leave it zipped. You can move it to your network or USB. You can also FTP it and other things, but these are the two easiest methods I wanted to show you. So now you've got a complete setup where you can start gaming on your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so you've taken your USB drive, you've plugged it into your Raspberry Pi, or you've moved it through your network, and now we need to reboot our Retro Pi. So you're just going to go ahead and click on your start button with whatever controller you're using, and you're going to click on quit and restart emulation station. Now once you click restart, emulation station is going to go through a boot and you're going to be back at your normal screen. But what we want to do is find our Game Boy section. So we should have a new section up here for Game Boy, which we do. And Double Dragon should be there, which it is. So let's go ahead and choose that. And it will launch. Now you can see, obviously, the Game Boy had a very small screen. That's what it was made for. But they do a really good job on the emulation of actually bringing it to a playable uh, resolution. And let's go ahead and get started here. Oh no, he took the girl! I'll save you with my manly manliness. Started right out with a jump kick there. Come on. Uh, uh, uh. Got you! I am clearly not good at this game. But anyways, as you can see, we have it up and running. Everything's working perfectly, and we are good to go. So that's how you install a game on your Retro Pi. I hope you get in there and enjoy it. Let me know some games that you're playing on your emulation station. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I will talk to you guys later.